We got news to make everybody angry. Actually, most people will be delighted, but some people will be very angry to hear that the pre-sale for the AEW show at the United Center in Chicago, probably by the time the show is over, is going to be totally sold out. Pre-sale today. The uh, tickets were supposed to go on sale next week. I don't think anybody are gonna. I don't think any of them are gonna go on sale. I mean, it's possible that they will try to open up some more sections and sell more tickets uh, coming up next week. But according to WrestleTix, Patreon.com/WrestleTix, uh, they looked at a few other concerts at the United Center. A few used a very similar setup to what AEW is doing for the, the first dance. 21 Pilots, for example, has this identical setup. Counting every seat on this map, it is 18,481. And this number varies with each concert depending on the floor setup, seen as high as 19K. But the seats that they will not likely use because they have a large stage setup uh, come out to about 4,624 seats. So the available seats for the AEW show at the United Center... If they use a normal pro wrestling setup with the giant stage, would be thirteen thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven tickets. They are well over uh, ten thousand tickets right now, and actually that was a few hours ago. And uh, somebody was trying to buy a ticket, and they tweeted me what is available, and it's like one section is left available. So there are probably going to be production blocks to take up seats. So. Uh, WrestleTix is presuming that about 13,000 tickets will be a sellout for this particular setup. And uh, I'm expecting that that probably will happen before this show ends here today, uh, probably by the end of the day. They can always attempt to open up more seats later on. But uh, easy, easy, you can't even say first day sellout because officially the sellout was supposed to be first day next week. But they have sold a lot, a lot of... A lot of tickets. So, uh, this will be the Rampage show. I mean, I can't report this as fact, obviously, because they have not officially announced anything, but it would be the debut of CM Punk for AEW, and he probably would come out near the end of the show, probably do a stare down with Darby Allen, and probably set up CM Punk versus Darby Allen for the all out show. And then once the television show goes off the air, I'm sure there would be something in the building for the fans that show up to see CM Punk as well. So that is the update for that show. If we get more information, obviously, we'll give it to you during this show here. We also have the ratings for Dynamite on uh, Wednesday night. For the third straight week, uh, over 1 million viewers. 1.108 million down 3.5% in viewers from last week. Fourth highest viewership the show has drawn since its premiere. 18 to 49, the show did a 0.45 rating, up 2.3% from last week. Actual viewership number in that category, 582,000 viewers in 18 to 49. And it's not really a fair comparison because the NXT show was moved to sci-fi. But regardless, the 18-49 to 49 viewership for AEW beat the total viewership in all demos, the actual number of human beings watching the show on Sci-Fi. So that's a stat for you. 18-49 to 49 matched the third highest rating Dynamite has ever done in that demo. The 18-49 to 49 number, the best number the show has done in all of 2021 so far. It is going head-to-head uh, -head with the Olympics this week. Uh, year over year, and keep in mind we're pandemic versus, I mean, we're still in a pandemic, but we got full crowds. 43.3% in viewership, up 50% in 18 to 49. The third straight week, the Dynamite's year over year increases in both categories have been 30% or more. Obviously, one of the stories last night was the quarter hours. They did not have every quarter hour above 1 million viewers. The fourth quarter... Uh, 945 to 10 did fall below 1 million viewers. And of course, this is now a big talking point. A lot of people have, have made their, they have created their conclusion and all evidence to the contrary, they've made up their mind about why that happened. Obviously, that was following the loss of Hangman Page. So when I first saw the drop, 
I presumed that Hangman Page was beaten, and a lot of people got really mad, and they turned off the television show. However, what happened after that quarter is that the show grew and grew and grew and grew and grew and and peaked in uh, the main event. It didn't peak. This would have been the post-drop peak. The Chris Jericho versus Nick Gage match was the second highest rated quarter of the show. And uh, I believe the highest rated quarter in 18 to 34. Uh, The audience returned after the drop. And if you look at the quarter where everything dropped, there were several things that happened. Yes, Hangman Page was defeated. However, uh, DirecTV also went off the air for seven minutes during that quarter. And they loaded up a bunch of commercials because there were a limited number of commercials in the first 45 minutes of the show. So if you look at the available evidence, don't get me wrong. I'm sure that some people... I've heard it. My friend's dad was really mad. I'm sure a small number of people were so upset with the loss of the hangman that they turned the show off. But the large, the larger issue here was DirecTV going off the air for seven minutes during that quarter, and also a large number of commercials, because if you follow the ratings for AEW, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, if you have a heavy commercial quarter, you lose... Viewers, it's just what happens. So if you would like to create your conclusion that this hangman decision was a poor decision, and this is evidence of it, you're welcome to do so. But in fact, it's actually not evidence of that. So that's the story with the quarter hours. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.